Missing dead heroes abound in literature predating Christianity. Is it possible that Mark relied upon this common motif when he wrote his original empty tomb ending? Are there examples of an empty tomb or similar motif in literature that would have permeated Mark's particular environment, the first century Greco-Roman world? If we conclude that Mark was writing deliberate fiction, he would have had total creative freedom to create the ending to his story as he saw fit within the bounds of his overarching goals, of course. Showing an empty tomb is far more subtle and sophisticated than showing Jesus himself popping out of the tomb yelling, Here's Johnny! Keeping Jesus out of the picture, at least visibly, adds a bit of mystery, uncertainty. The reader is allowed to put the data together on their own without being spoon-fed, although the lad in the tomb kind of leaves no doubt about what happened. Not only does it make for a better ending, but there is a long list of ancient heroes and rulers who were deified both during and after their lives, and in fact, many who, upon dying, suddenly went missing and were thought to have ascended into heaven. The basic idea is of a hero who suddenly turns up missing after death. The hero dies, the body disappears, a search often ensues, but the body cannot be found. It is then assumed that the hero had risen from the dead and ascended into heaven, or perhaps in some cases, was translated directly into heaven before actually dying. The hero is often later deified. This is known as an apotheosis story. In his book, The Incredible Shrinking Son of Man, Robert M. Price gives several examples of the missing hero motif, which can be found in stories predating the Gospels. I'll briefly list a few here, starting with ones we find in the Jewish scriptures, which would have also been available to Mark in the form of the Greek Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures. According to Genesis chapter 5, Enoch walked with God and was not. The implication is that he was not to be found. And as such, the idea that he did not actually die but was taken up into heaven naturally evolved as the story passed from generation to generation. And this is exactly how the author of Hebrews interpreted the passage in Genesis. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and he was not found because God translated him. A tradition also arose concerning Moses and the notion that he too was taken up into heaven instead of dying. So Moses, the servant of Jehovah, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of Jehovah, and he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor, but no man knoweth of his tomb unto this day. In his Antiquities of the Jews, written in the very late first century, Josephus recounts the explicit idea that Moses was also translated directly into heaven prior to his death. All those who accompanied him were the Senate and Eleazar, the high priest, and Joshua, their commander. Now as soon as they were come to the mountain called Abarim, and as soon as he was going to embrace Eleazar and Joshua, and was still discoursing with him, a cloud stood over him on the sudden, and he disappeared in a certain valley, although he wrote in the holy books that he died, which was done out of fear, lest they should venture to say that because of his extraordinary virtue, he went to God. Elijah was also taken directly to heaven in a chariot of fire, and it might be reasonable to think that this is why we see both Elijah and Moses appearing at Jesus' transfiguration. Neither prophet was believed to have actually died. They were not in Sheol, as the rest of the dead people, but in heaven, and as such, they could appear from heaven just like the angels could. So why didn't Enoch appear at the transfiguration as well? Maybe two's company, three's a crowd. 
Seriously though, Enoch appears only in a few verses, mostly describing how long he lived and how many offspring he begat. That alone is likely why he does not appear at the Transfiguration. He simply was not famous enough to overtake Elijah and Moses. He may have walked with God, but he didn't hold a candle to the big guns. But the common motif in these is that the bodies could not be found. And that gave birth to the idea that they must have been taken directly into heaven by God. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 15 through 18, we read this very thing concerning Elijah. Elijah's followers beg his son, Elisha, that they may go search for Elijah's body. Elisha finally caves in and reluctantly agrees. There's a three-day search for Elijah's body, and after three days of searching, using a search party of 50 men, they finally give up. And Elisha tells them, in effect, I told you so. After Heracles died, who was a son of Zeus, men looked for his bones and couldn't find any. And remembering a prophecy that he was destined for immortality, concluded that he must have been taken up into heaven. Apollo's son, Aristeus, vanished while in the region of Mount Hamas, and he was thus thought to have been taken up directly into heaven. Aeneas, son of Aphrodite, Venus being the Roman equivalent, survived the Battle of Troy, and his descendants later founded Rome, but he came up missing after a particular battle and was assumed to have been translated directly into heaven. In the biographical work, Lives of Eminent Philosophers, Diogenes Laertius recounts the philosopher Empedocles inviting some of his friends to a sacrificial feast. At daybreak, the following day, his guests who had stayed overnight searched for him but could not find him. His servants could not find him, and someone said in the night they had heard a loud voice calling Empedocles, and when he got up and looked, he saw a light in the heavens and a glitter of lamps. Pausanias sent more people to search, but later called the search off, saying that things beyond expectation had happened to him, and it was their duty to sacrifice to him since he was now a god. Even Romulus, the mythical founder of Rome, which is the city likely to have been home to our now famous Mark, disappeared during a battle and was assumed to have gone to heaven as a god. Romulus, son of Mars, vanished in the midst of battle during which the sun darkened temporarily and some claimed to have seen him ascending up from the battlefield. He was later deified as the god Corinus. Plutarch writes, he disappeared on the Nones of July, as they now call the month which was then Quintilis, leaving nothing of certainty to be related of his death. Only the time, Romulus, when he vanished, left neither the least part of his body nor any remnant of his clothes to be seen. The senators suffered them not to search or busy themselves about the matter, but commanded them to honor and worship Romulus as one taken up to the gods. Since the literature of the Jews, Romans, and Greeks was littered with stories of missing heroes who were then deemed to have either risen from death or never died and went straight to heaven and often deified in the process, the man who authored what we now call the Gospel of Mark himself most likely a Roman citizen, would have been quite familiar with many of those stories and certainly that of Romulus, the mythical founder of Mark's hometown. We can easily see how a completely human Jesus could have died and a legend arising that he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven on a par with God. This could even have been applied whether Mark believed in an earthly Jesus or a heavenly Jesus, like the Jesus of Paul and many other early Christians. The precedent for the missing hero turned deity motif is certainly plentiful in the literature to which Mark would have had access, and it provides a nice explanation for why Mark does not provide an appearance of Jesus in his original version. There was no need. 
Mark's readers, well familiar with the tales of Romulus, ancient Greek heroes, Roman emperors who were deified, and so on, knew that the missing Jesus represented a Jesus who had risen from the dead as the young lad had told the women at the tomb, and who would soon ascend up through the clouds and into heaven, as did Romulus, Heracles, Elijah, and so many others before him. In the next video, we'll look at some parallels between various events in the Gospels and what seems to be their corresponding antecedents in the Old Testament. Was the life of Jesus a historical affair, or was it merely constructed from existing literary tales? See you there.